Welcome back to the Scaredy Cat Gardener. We are going to be discussing GMOs in gardening. So we're going to dive right in. First off, let's define GMO. GMOs are genetically modified organisms. Uh, very controversial, very, very controversial topic, just in general and as well in gardening. Uh, because you have concerns about potential environmental risk and health implications. You have some gardeners that embrace the technology for its potential benefits. And yes, GMOs do actually have benefits. But then there's others that have their reservations about it because just like GMOs have their benefits, GMOs also have long-term lasting side effects. So, GMOs in gardening, genetically modified organisms, refer to plants that have had their genetic materials altered in a laboratory, often to maybe introduce specific traits, such as being resistance to pests, herbicides, or even diseases. Now, while GMOs have been a subject of debate, big debates, they really do offer potential benefits as well as raise important concerns. Uh, so let's touch on the potential benefits of the GMOs in gardening. Uh, then we'll touch on the concerns and the potential risk uh, in gardening and then overall. Um, and many of you may not realize that GMOs do have uh, specific benefits when it comes to gardening. As an example, increased yield, increased crops. Uh, GMOs can be actually engineered to produce higher yields, bigger, larger crops, which in essence reduces the need for more land and resources. And as we know, when it comes to land, they are not making any more. This is why it's important to buy land because they're not making any more. And if they're not making any more, the resources and the land to grow on will become less and less. You will need to increase your crops eventually, especially with all the big box stores popping up, the complexes that are popping up, and they're taking over the land and there won't be much land to grow on. So you have to, in turn, you have to find a way to continue to produce massive crops. Um, it can also improve pest and disease resistance. GMOs can actually be made uh, resistant to certain pests, diseases, um, and that in general reduces the need for chemical pesticides. Um, it's enhanced nutritional value. I mean, GMOs can be modified in so many ways and they can be modified to have higher levels of essential nutrients um, or even to produce new nutrients. Um, tolerance to environmental stress. GMOs can be developed to tolerate harsh environment conditions, droughts, flooding, just a number of things. So when you look at GMOs, most people say, oh my God, it's been genetically modified. It's been altered. This is all true, but even within that, there are benefits. So when you think about GMOs, you really have to kind of weigh. You have to weigh your personal preference and things that you want uh, to come out of your own crops and things that you may want to buy, should it be genetically modified or not. Now, let's touch on some of the cons when it comes to, those are some of the pros, let's touch on some of the cons when it comes to GMO gardening. Okay, so uh, concerns. A lot of people have a lot of concerns when it comes to GMO in gardening, and rightfully so. Uh, personally, I'm not a fan of GMO, uh, but I do understand the benefits, I understand the pros, and I understand the cons. Right now, I would prefer not to have any GMOs, but I can't say that that will be so in the near future because I don't know what the near future holds. So I don't want to 
um, just close my eyes and ears and my doors off to it all together. I want to continue to learn about it, continue to weigh the pros and the cons as time and the environment changes, uh, land and resources and things like that change as well. Now, concerns. Environmental impact is a huge concern. Uh, there are concerns about the potential environmental impacts on GMOs, such as the development of herbicide resistant weeds. Okay, then you can't control your weeds because they become herbicide resistant uh, or the unintended harm to non-targeted organisms. There are also health risks. Some people are concerned about the potential health risk associated with consuming GMOs. And this is why we don't always buy GMOs if we know in the grocery stores for the things that we do buy. Um, and right now, there's really no scientific evidence to support the concerns, but just in doing your research and reading about it and seeing how they are made and genetically modified, I would have to say there are definitely uh, some health risks that could be associated with it. Now, that's my personal belief. Like I said, there's no scientific proof of it, but that's what I think. Also, you have ethical concerns and considerations. You know, um, the use of GMOs raises ethical questions about the manipulation of nature in general. I mean, we have things that grow wild and there's nothing done to it. And so when you manipulate your plants to be genetically modified, there's the question of, are you manipulating nature? And that's a real ethical concern, as well as the potential consequences for the future generations to come behind us. Um, you also have corporate control, which is, to me, huge. I mean, critics argue that the development and the control of GMOs are concentrated in the hands of just a few large companies and corporations. Uh, which can limit the access to genetic resources and it can reduce competition. But uh, I'm not so sure about that when it comes to corporate control. Let me know in the comments what you all think. But I'm right now, I'm not too sure about the corporate control and how that plays in with everything. But uh, before we go on and get into the current status of GMO and gardening, uh, if you'd like to stay informed and discuss more topics like this, subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on that notification bell and set it to all. Uh, and speaking about the current status of GMO, you know, regulatory approval. Uh, GMOs are subject to rigorous regulatory approval processes in many countries, and that's to ensure their safety and their environmental impact. Uh, you also have public acceptance. I mean, public acceptance of GMOs varies widely across different regions and cultures. You have some countries that they actually embrace GMOs, while others impose restrictions and bans on it. So you've got, you've got a scale there and things need to be weighed. You also have uh, consumer labeling. In some countries, there are labeling requirements for products derived from GMOs, allowing you know consumers to be more informed and make their own choices. And now I'm, I'm in favor of that. You know, if you're gonna have the GMOs, label it. So that when I go to purchase something, I know this is GMO and I can personally make the decision for myself and my family. Um, you know, as technology continues to evolve, the debate over GMOs and gardening is probably going to remain really complex and multifaceted in a lot of issues. Um, it's important to consider both the potential benefits as well as the impact and risks that are associated with GMOs. Um, and to be informed, engaged, and so that you can make balanced decisions, whether it's your garden that you're growing it in and the seeds, are they GMO or not? Uh, make a conscious decision. Do I, wanna, do I want to plant this that has GMO? Do I not want to plant this? When you're in the grocery store, labeling to me is really important. Do I want to buy this? Am I doing this on purpose, consciously, because I see the labeling, I know what I'm buying. I want to be a conformed in consumer. I want to be a 
informed. I want to be an informed consumer. I want to be an informed gardener. I want to make the decision for myself as well as for my family. Let me know in the comments your take on GMO. Are you okay with GMOs? Or are you against them, undecided, just plain neutral? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. I'm Pam. This is Zone 8A. And anywhere you can sit apart, you can grow a plant.